Uh, I think it's working. Um, hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for the delay. Um, it's the first time I, I do Facebook Live. Uh, uh, I had to upgrade uh, my browser. Um, I'll uh, wait a couple uh, seconds to let people trickle in. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, Ramadan Kareem. Um, I wonder, oh great, okay, um, so today we're, we're talking about podcasting and the rise of podcasts, um, how, maybe you guys can put into the comments, how many of you listen to podcasts? Um, okay, well, <laughs> as, as hopefully some people respond. Um, so I'm, I'm Hibba Fisher. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Kerning Cultures. Uh, we're a podcast network. Uh, we started in Dubai and we now have producers um, in Cairo, in Beirut, in Riyadh, uh, and the UK and the US. Um, and, uh, and we produce Arabic and English shows uh, that regularly top the podcast charts across the Middle East. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, podcasting and the rise of, of podcasts uh, globally and, and, and in the Middle East. Um, and I hope, I hope you guys listen to podcasts. And if you don't, I invite you to, uh, to discover the magical world of podcasts because they're pretty awesome. Um, and uh, for, for those who might not know what podcasts are, it's basically online radio. Um, and I want to play a clip, I hope it works, um, to give you a sense of what I mean when, when I talk about podcasts, because it's a, there's a particular style uh, of production um, that's, that's different than, than any media uh, otherwise. Um, let me play this. This is from uh, one of our shows, from an English show uh, called Kerning Cultures. And one story that always kind of captures my imagination is the street loss culture. <laughs> and you're listening to Kerning Cultures. I remember it vividly. I was in downtown and I went walking to the lawyer's office, which is about 15 minutes away. You know, I was sitting there wide eyed and, and very stunned. I, I couldn't even react. I couldn't even ask the questions I wanted to ask. I left his office and I walked back for about two hours till my parents' home where I was staying. And I was crying all the way. I could not imagine that my life has come down to that. I could not imagine that he, the person I chose to complete my life with, the father of my two daughters, the, the person whom I had so many memories, good memories and, and, and good moments with, that he would have me go down that road. Um, so this is this is when, when we're talking about podcasts. There's a bunch of different kinds of styles. Uh, for those of you who do listen, you'll know uh, you can do interview style. You can do more storytelling style. Um, there's some that that mimic radio uh, a, a lot in terms of the multiple people around a table having a discussion. Um, our style of production is often uh, very story driven, uh, very narrative driven, uh, with with music and sound design, multiple interviews woven with host narration. It's it's very much like a film in your ear. Like I, I hope I hope you could hear um, that that episode was um, from uh, or that clip was from an episode called Her Side of the Story, which is um, non narrated stories of women describing the aftermath of their divorce. Uh, it's one of my favorite episodes. Um, um, so. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of an overview about podcasting uh, globally uh, and, and then also in the region. So podcasting is huge. <laughs> um, there are over 600 million active podcast listeners in China, um, over 150 million active podcast listeners in the U.S., 21 million in Brazil, 
um, and in 5 million in Saudi and 1.3 million in the UAE. Um, and those are the only two countries where any uh, research has been done about podcast uh, listening behavior. We know from, from our own numbers that Egypt is, is pretty much tied with the UAE in terms of where our audience comes from. Um, and so there's, there's a huge uh, listening um, culture already, uh, given how new podcasts are to the region. There's already a lot of people tuning into podcasts in Egypt, in Jordan, uh, it's really big, in Oman, it's really big, and, uh, and uh, Algeria is also really big. Um, and if you're an active podcast listener, you're typically listening to between five to seven hours of podcasts a week. So we're seeing extremely high engagements. Um, and if you think about the use cases of when people are listening to podcasts, it's because you're, you're, you're listening to podcasts to transform some of the most boring moments of your life, right? So when you're commuting, which we used to do, uh, now it's folding laundry or cleaning the house or going for a walk or exercising. Um, these are moments where you can completely enter these story worlds and, and um, transform otherwise very boring uh, times of our day and be entertained, learn something. Um, and, uh, and there's this really beautiful relationship between you, uh, the podcast listener and the podcast host where you, you really feel, I mean, you're literally in their ears um, as producers. Uh, and so as a listener, you, you start to develop this kind of intimate relationship where you feel like you know the team, you feel like you know the producers and, and like they're an extension of your friends. Um, and, uh, and the typical uh, podcast uh, listener demographic is quite unique as well. So as a media, it's, it's pretty powerful. Um, we're young, we're educated, and we're affluent. Um, and so this is, this is a space that's very commercially lucrative as well. So when you're, when you're thinking about monetizing podcasts through advertising or sponsorship, um, this becomes a really interesting pay place. 60% of podcast listeners are the same customer profile who pays for a Netflix subscription, pays for a Spotify or an Remy subscription, uh, pays for an Amazon Prime subscription. So it's, it's a particular um, cohort right, that are listening to podcasts, which, uh, which, is, which is really exciting. I mean, we're a very young population in the region and, and more and more we're turning, uh, turning, into, turning to podcasts as a as a, um, a media to entertain us. Um, so you might ha have this feeling that like podcasts have come out of nowhere and probably a lot of people around you listen to podcasts. Um, and where did this all come from? Um, so if I can just map out a, a little bit of a history um, of how podcasting has really taken off and I'll look at the US uh, market as a, as, a, as a historical trend. And from there we can see uh, some trends of, of what is happening in the Middle East. Um, so basically in 2008, your iPhone was on 3G, which was the first time that the technology uh, was uh, such that you could download audio files on the go. If you remember, this was the advent of MP3 players and, and iPods and, and all of that. Um, by uh, 2013, there were 1 billion podcast subscriptions. And then in 2014, the whole space exploded because Apple made it such that you couldn't delete that purple podcast app from your phone. Um, and a show called Serial happened. If, if you guys are familiar with an American uh, true crime show called Serial, which uh, within the first season, it, it had 250 million downloads. That year, there were 7 billion podcast downloads. And then last year, there were 10 billion podcast downloads. And so the, the, the reason podcasting has really taken off has been um, a, a, a factor of accessibility of the technology and then access to good quality audio content. If we map that to what's happening in the Middle East, we know we have some of the highest smartphone penetration rates in the world, but the, but the, the content that's available is still, um, there's still some ways to go in terms of really good content. And if we look again at a market like the US, there's probably 350,000 active podcast shows. In the Middle East, there's maybe 1,000 to 1,500, uh, either in Arabic or in English. And so there's a real opportunity here to produce high quality content. Um, uh, because there, there's already a demand. We know 1.3 million listeners in the UAE, 5.1 million listeners in Saudi, um, and and there's there's more demand right now than there is supply in terms of good content. Um, and so that's as as creatives, that's a real opportunity in thinking about uh, podcasts as a media for you to move into uh, is really smart. I would stress that um, 
the barrier to entry to starting a podcast is very uh, low. Like anyone and their mother can start a podcast. You just, you can literally record from your iPhone and then put it up on SoundCloud and you have a show. Um, but please don't do that <laughs> because we don't want spam and we also don't want to saturate the market with a lot of bad shows. So be thoughtful about the content that you're creating. I really make it something worthwhile for your listeners and, and, and ask yourself, you know, is this something that somebody actually wants to listen to? Um, because I think you're doing a disservice to the industry in general, uh, putting out content that, you know, it, it, it'll just crowd the space. And um, and I, I would I would liken podcasting to blogs, frankly. So just be thoughtful about the kind of content that you're creating. Um, so some of the most popular genres in, in the Middle East in terms of uh, the podcasting scene and, and what kind of podcasts are charting regularly, uh, charting but meaning are on top of uh, Apple Podcasts uh, um, regularly across the, the region is love is a, is a big one, wellness is a big one, news, fiction shows, music, science, and history. Um, and so there's there's also a lot of opportunity to, to produce different kinds of genre. I think we have so, there's so much, there's so much good stories. Um, there's, you know, we haven't really done any investigative journalism. Um, there hasn't uh, there hasn't really been shows on food, although uh, one just launched last uh, about a week ago. Um, there's there's a, there's a number of really great opportunities to to launch shows that haven't been done before, and I think that's the exciting thing about podcasting in the Arab world is that um, it's it's still so new, and so we get to define the space, we get to 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 really create the kind of content that we're excited about, um, and. Uh, and and you can right. It's a very unsaturated market. It's 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 a blue ocean, which which is awesome. Um, in uh, in terms of um, how COVID has affected podcasting, um, there's there's really little uh, consensus <laughs> around the data. Um, if you look globally, uh, Spotify in in March said that Spotify is a huge. Uh, um, source of, of where uh, people listen to podcasts. Apple Podcasts is number one and Spotify is quickly gaining traction, especially because they're investing very heavily uh, globally in, in, um, in building out their podcasting capability. And so they reported that they had about a 10% dip in podcast downloads um, in March. Uh, but then statistics have kind of bounced back and say it's kind of level. We know from from Kerning Culture's numbers that our numbers have grown actually. So from Feb to March, we we bumped up eighty uh, percent, which is which is crazy, um, and and it was largely driven by the fact uh, that that people had you know they were looking for ways to entertain themselves, and and also our shows are are, are really good. Alhamdulillah, I encourage you to check them out. Um, and uh, and then uh, we've grown as well from April to or from um, from March to April, uh, and so. I, I believe that quarantine has actually accelerated the growth of podcasts, and um, there's a couple of, of really great thinkers. Um, I'm thinking of uh, Leila Hassan from 500 Startups that has talked about um, how, yeah, the the there's a lot of newness, <laughs> there's a lot of new trends that are emerging from COVID, and habits that we're building right now um, are going to stick with us, and and so of course these are very unusual times, um, but we're building different kinds of habits because all of our, our routines have been completely changed. Um, and these habits are going to be hard to break when we when life goes back to normal. Uh, and so I, I think podcasts, listening to podcasts is one of those trends that is on the up, uh, especially in the region. Um, and so I think when we go back to when we, life goes back to normal, inshallah, people will continue to, be, to, to keep these habits and continue to listen to podcasts. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you. Um, there's a there's a question from Hagrid. Hello, um, about who are the podcast listeners in the MENA region? Um, I want more than anything to tell important stories for the region, and I'm wondering where do we reach the listeners in the Middle East? Because I notice not many people know what podcasts are. So I'll tell you. So we as Kerning Cultures, we've been producing stories for the past five years, um, and I mean, I would enter rooms <laughs> so often uh, and and start with, do you know what a podcast is? I, I, I never make an assumption because a lot of people still don't know. I would say that that's changing significantly. Uh, and I've noticed a huge shift within the past 18 months um, where more and more people are listening to podcasts. And so you don't have to worry so much about that anymore. I think the awareness is there. 
Um, and what we know from the data is that Saudi and, and the UAE are, are leading the region in terms of podcast listenership, but those are also the only two countries that any data has, has been uh, uh, collected on. So I think Egypt, uh, like I mentioned, is, is, is quite close to the UAE in terms of uh, podcast listener penetration. Um, so in terms of uh, reaching the listeners, I mean, one of the um, most powerful ways to promote your podcast is cross-promotion on other podcasts. And so going where podcast listeners already are is, is really effective. Um, so that, and that's not radio, that's not TV, but it's other podcasts. And I would um, urge you to find podcasts where the listener profile is similar. So they cover similar contents. Um, uh, because that that's that's a much cleaner uh, and and um, lighter sort of jump for a listener to move from one show to another. With with Kerning Cultures, we've tried. So we tried for we experimented a lot with different marketing strategies. And so one was we would promote uh, English shows on other Arabic podcasts, and that doesn't work uh, at all. So don't do that. <laughs> um, but if you kind of promote like and like, I, I think that that really helps both in content as well as language. Um, and in terms of who the podcast listeners are in the region, uh, I mentioned earlier that the demographic is pretty consistent the world over. Um, so we're young, we're educated, and we're affluent. And, and what that translates to is the majority of podcast listeners are between the ages of 18 and 45. Um, for us, 91% of our listeners have a bachelor's degree or higher, and the average income is about 185,000 dirham a year, uh, or about 50,000 U.S., um, and, and this is this is consistent uh, globally. Um, and if you also think about in terms of the opportunity, I mean, in the Middle East, we're experiencing one of the largest youth bulges of our time. 65% of the population is under the age of 35, um, which is 140 million people between the ages of 15 and 35 in the Arab world. And so we're a very young people. Uh, so in terms of the, <laughs> the, the, the amount of potential listeners that you have, it's, it's, it's quite great, which is really exciting. Um, there's a question from Salma, are there comparable audiences for Arabic versus English podcasts in MENA and how does viewership compare between languages? So for us with Kerning Cultures, we've, we've noticed, so we've, we have five Arabic shows and two English ones and our Arabic shows, uh, outperform our English shows by a long shot. Um, and, uh, and so I, I think when you're thinking about producing content, think about producing it in Arabic. That's really where the where the hunger is. I mean, not just for podcasts, um, but for media in general. Like we don't have enough good quality Arabic content, um, and so I, I I really believe that that's where the opportunity uh, where the opportunity is. Um, and there's a question from Yusuf. I wanted to ask, what are the most popular podcasting platforms for listeners in MENA? In Egypt, people talk a lot about SoundCloud, but I don't believe that SoundCloud is ideal for podcasts. It wasn't made for them. Uh, yeah, 100%. So um, as a podcaster, your uh, job is to have your shows anywhere a listener might be. That's like the number one thing that you have to do whenever you start a channel. You need to... Uh, it's a one you set it up once at the beginning and you just distribute uh, the show to every single possible listening platform of which there's a list of, you know, maybe 25 or something or, or Octor, I, I, I can't remember. Um, but uh, Apple Podcasts uh, is huge. And so that's the number one, uh, like they're they're dominating the market in terms of listenership. So that's the first place. Um, SoundCloud is big in certain countries. So we've noticed that it's really big in Philistine, for example. It's it's decently big in Egypt, but I also agree with you, the UX as a listener is terrible. Um, so from your perspective, you just need to make sure that you're on SoundCloud, but I, I, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't only be on SoundCloud. I would make sure that you're on Spotify, that you're on Enremi, that you're on Deezer, that you're on Google Podcasts, Castbox, Acast. I mean, there's there's a there's a whole list. Um, and, and I think that's the name of the game is just make sure that your show is anywhere a listener could possibly be. Um, are there other questions? Anything I can answer about podcasting, uh, its future, <laughs> about kerning cultures? Um, okay, well, cool. Well, if anybody uh, thinks of anything later, um, definitely you can you can find us 
on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, we're at Kerning Cultures. Um, this was fun. Uh, I, uh, I hope, um, I, I wish you the best with whatever podcasting endeavors that, that you guys want to do. Um, definitely uh, tune in to, to some of the Kerning Cultures shows. We have um, really, really lovely ones. Uh, one called Bihob, which is about love and relationships. Um, another one called Sukun, which is a daily guided meditation uh, podcast in Arabic, which is so wonderful uh, as a way to start your day, especially during Ramadan. Um, oh, there's some there's some other questions. Okay, and then I'll say bye. <laughs> um, from Samia, what are the steps or tips to record our voice or other voice clearly? What are the common types of content people are liking more? Um, in terms of recording your voice, so one thing I can't stress enough is to make sure that you have good uh, audio qualities, M make sure that you invest in good gear. Um, I don't think you need that to start. I, I think that like when we started with Kerning Cultures, I mean, we would record Skype calls and distribute those and, and, and it helped just to get um, the production side of things. We, we were able to hone our craft as storytellers uh, and then we upgraded our gear to, to professional recorders and mics. Um, but, uh, but I, um, I, I think in terms of recording your voice, I, one of the beautiful things about podcasts, and you can really hear this is that they're very casual. I think that is the most powerful thing about them is that this isn't like an authoritative voice talking to you like we're used to with traditional radio. Um, this is really like as if it's a friend, uh, talking to you. And so just lean into that when you're recording and when you're narrating, um, don't, don't try to be super stiff, but but being casual and informal. And, and you can even hear that in the choice of uh, like, like when, when we're producing, we don't, we don't produce any of our Arabic content. And actually one show is in Lugha Fasiha, but Hamad Aniani, we, we speak Ammeya. And, and I think that, that that's, that's really, really lovely um, to, to hear. Um, so so that's, that's what I would say. And in terms of the types of content that people are liking, I had mentioned earlier that genres that are doing really well are love and relationships, wellness and health, um, music, uh, history, science, these are all genres that perform really well. Um, there's a question from Abdurrahman. There's a podcast in Saudi called The Mania, and they do podcasting on Google Podcasts. So my question, what is the best podcast app? Um, so the best, I, I had um, spoken about this just a couple minutes ago. So the, the, as a podcaster, you need to make sure that your podcast is everywhere that listeners could possibly listen. Um, so it's not a matter of picking one app. It's a matter of distributing your show everywhere. Uh, so that's Apple Podcasts, that's Google Podcasts, that's Spotify, that's Enremi, that's Deezer, that's Acast, Radio Public. I mean, there's there's a dozen and a half Octoriani of different podcast apps. And just make sure that you uh, list your podcast in all these places. Um, the, the app that has the most listeners globally is Apple Podcasts. Um, and then depending on what region we're talking about, like in China, there's a, a, um, another app called Himalaya that's quite big. Um, Spotify is gaining very fast traction uh, in terms of um, retaining and, and having uh, it be also an app for listening to podcasts in addition to music. Um, Deezer is is moving in very quickly in the region. They've invested a lot uh, and have just recently launched podcasts a couple weeks ago, making it available yeah, I need to, to listen to podcasts on their sh platform in the region. So you, you just need to be everywhere. Um, cool. I think that's my time. Um, again, if, if anybody has any other questions, just uh, hit hit us up at Kerning Cultures on you know whatever social. Um, and uh, I, I hope I hope you listen to some of our shows. Um, you can find us wherever you get your podcasts. And have a good rest of your evening. Yalla, take care.